Hey everyone, in this video I'll be showing you further examples of how I create lighting effects with digital ink and screen tones, as well as how I use sparkle effects in this illustration of the spell Enrom's Glitter Ray for the Mystic Punks RPG. Benjamin Mara here, illustrator and cartoonist. Welcome to my channel where I reveal to you my process and give insights about art projects I'm working on with the hope you'll learn some new techniques and be inspired when making your own art. So I'm illustrating this spell where a wolf's head made out of light is shooting from the palm of the spellcaster's hand and the wolf's head is also, the flesh of it is being torn off half of its head to reveal the skull beneath the skin. It's a kind of a crazy description. So what I'm doing is just figuring out the outlines for everything that I've sketched out, which is the wolf head and the skull. I put it at a bit of an angle to give it a little bit more dynamism and just have it have a little bit more energy to it. I'm not really too sure what a wolf's skull looks like. I looked a little bit, I looked online a little bit at some reference, but that's all I did. I'm making it up as I go pretty much. I want to give it a little bit of a sense that the spell is like an energy source that's like leaping from the palm of the hand but it's also something that's made out of light so i have all these sparkle effects in place one artist that i think about for sparkle effects is gary panter i think he does really good spacescapes and stars they look kind of crude but i like that quality and i try to encapsulate that in my stuff as well I want there to be some kind of light coming off of the wolf's head, so I'm making it, having all these energy lines coming off of it. I'm doing a lot of feathering on the wolf's flesh side because I want there to sort of feel like it's got some fur on there, making the fur align a bit with the angle of the direction that it's being cast in, just to support that feeling of this force coming at a diagonal in the drawing. I want to accent that wherever I can, but also because it's made out of light, I don't want the fur to be too dense or too dark. So it's a little bit of a balancing act, try and show fur, but then also not have it be too thick. I want it to look like light is coming off of this thing. I'm going to surround the whole head with black shadow so it pushes the head forward and it looks brighter than it probably is if it would be if it's on a white background as it is now. I'm just tinkering with the detail here, putting in some highlights on the eyes. Now I'm going into the hand. This is pretty easy. I know that the light is coming from the palm of the hand, so it's a pretty extreme light source. So I can pretty much put everything that's opposite the beam of light coming from the palm in shadow, which includes all the fingers. This is kind of a Kirby-esque drawing of a hand, I feel like. It reminds me of that Fantastic Four cover with Galactus's hands shooting beams down on the Fantastic Four. I believe that's the first appearance of Galactus. Now what I'm doing is setting a separate layer for the feathering that I'm going to do for the black field that the spell is going to be sitting on. It's just easier for me to feather freely on another layer and then erase the parts of it that I don't need anymore. Once I get it all the once I get all the feathering down, I can just go back in and erase what I don't need. I don't have to worry about crossing over the border of the wolf's head drawing this way. It just saves me time and I can be a little bit more reckless with my mark making, a little bit freer. I don't have to worry about coming right up on the edge of these kind of complicated lines that define the border of the wolf's head part of the spell. So now I can go in and just erase what I don't need from the feathering. But I want the feathering in the background to have some motion to it. That's why I use the feathering technique there. I'm just using the same brush as an eraser to do this. It's way easier than using the eraser tool. I made the layer of the background, with the feathering, 50% opacity so that I could differentiate those lines from the lines in the foreground of the wolf skull.
making an edit to the tooth of the wolf here to make it sure it matches on each side. Now I'm bringing back the sketch so I can accurately drop in the stars and glinting effects. I want these to look like sparkles, so when you cast this spell, it's a glitter ray after all. I want there to be plenty of glitter effects. I'm just using these two kind of shapes, one of this star shape, four pointed star shape, along with a feathered star. Doing these on a different layer from the wolf's head as well, it's just easier for me to fill them in later with white. I can block them out here pretty easily. I took away the line art so I can just focus on going over the sparkles that I laid down in the sketch. I want to make sure that they're in spots that aren't going to obscure the wolf's head too much. Now I go in and I made the canvas a gray tone so that I can go and fill in all of these sparkle effects with white so they'll sit on top of the line art below it. I'm just going to make a few edits here if some stars are too close to one another. I see that I missed a few from the sketch so I'm just going to go back and add some. Make sure the spacing looks good. Now I'm getting close to the final result, but I need to just add some, some more sparkle effects, some more light effects. I'm just cutting into the inks that are already down using the same pen nib tool from Frendin that I always use, I'm using it as an eraser. Any area that looks kind of like a dead area is an area that I want to add some detail to. I feel like the center of this spell is a little bit too busy, so I'm just going to take away. It looks so I want that to be like a channel of light right at the center of the spell, the spell beam. I'm going to take away a little bit more fur, add a little bit of feathering to the hand just to support those shadow effects a little bit more, complete it a little bit more. I think about Tom Palmer a lot when I'm drawing hands. I'm adding gray tones here to make sure that the light source in the palm of the hand actually looks like a light source. If it's just sitting on a white background, it doesn't have anything to compare it to, the brightness. But if I put a gray tone in the background, it'll set off the white value in the palm of the hand and make it look like light is illuminating the palm of the hand. I'm just adding some screen tone feathering to the edges of the spell itself to soften the borders of the spell a bit. Now I'm going to use this spray paint brush to blend out the edge of the screen tones themselves just around the hand just to soften up that edge a bit. Blend it into the white background. This is the final piece. I think this, this is an okay drawing. I'm not too excited about it, but it's uh, gonna serve the purpose that it needs to serve.